Welcome to another session of Let's Talk NRM, our monthly program on natural resource management. This comes to you from MBMA, the Meghalaya Basin Management Agency, under the CLEM project, the Community-Led Landscape Management Project. Our topic of discussion today is Meghalaya's forest wealth, forests and environment. Meghalaya has been endowed with natural forests, so much so that Meghalaya is among the top five Indian states with forest cover as per geographical area. It also has a huge flora and fauna richness. It has been identified as one of the biodiversity hotspots in the world. But yet again, since 2019, there has been a decline in forest cover in Meghalaya. The use of science and technology in not only managing the forest wealth, but also letting the community use this forest wealth and yet sustainably is what is the order of the day. To discuss these and what the government of Meghalaya is doing to manage the forests and to help the community use the forest, we have with us none other than the Minister of Environment and Forest, Sri James Sangma with us today. Government of Meghalaya prepares five to 10 year plans for forest management and implementation. Mm -hmm. What are the focus areas for the present decadal plan in terms of both community forests and state-owned forests? The forest management plan, uh, as you know, uh, these are dependent on uh, the working schemes which are prepared by uh, the government. Uh, the forest management plan, as I already mentioned, um, is a way and mean to have a scientific method, so-called scientific method, to do extract forest produce. Right. And there are many, many challenges that the government is facing in, pre in the preparation of these working mm -hmm. schemes. But uh, here, I just wanted to uh, give my take on things. I feel that it is um, high time for us to start um, reimagining things uh, when it comes to our forests. We have seen, uh, you know, studies uh, where it is... Uh, very, very clearly mentioned that uh, it, it suggests that uh, forests, which are you know, natural forests, they offer us better ecosystem services mm -hmm. in terms of carbon sequestration, right. rather than those uh, forests which have been either reforested or afforested. I feel we need to set our priorities straight because um, I think we need to reimagine things in a way of more towards conservation rather than uh, towards uh, you know, carrying on with how things have been in the past in terms of uh, an economy that has always uh, relied on extraction and extraction from mm -hmm. our forests, be it in, in terms of mining, be it in terms of everything that we extract from forests. So in 1972, with statehood, also came the blessing of the sixth schedule. Yes. And the sixth schedule permitted the local population to use the produce of the forests mm. in their own traditional ways. Mm. What is the government doing in uh, making sure that there is science and technology used and also training mm. the local population so that the forests can be used in a sustainable way? This is, uh, of course, a very big challenge for us. Out of the 76% uh, of our forest cover, for us as a government, we only have ownership of about roughly about five point something percent uh, of that belongs to the government in the form of reserve forests or national parks. It becomes a very big challenge for us where um, our interventions, uh, where we can very, very freely um, move around and work on are confined to that just that 5%. But despite that, I think that uh, our efforts are on to spread that kind of uh, awareness amongst the ADCs, we are always there to provide that kind of support. Apart from that, I think uh, what you said about uh, the knowledge um, and to handhold them in the sense mm -hmm. of uh, uh, management of these uh, critical forests, that is something that um, is extremely important. And um, well, I'd like to give you an example of our community reserved forests that we have in Meghalaya, where uh, we uh, have about 70, uh, I think 75 or 76 amount of community reserve forests that we have in Meghalaya, which mm -hmm. are 
uh, forested areas which uh, are managed by local villagers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this has been an extremely uh, successful model and uh, people have uh, appreciated this. And uh, uh, the interaction between the, uh, the villagers and our forest department has really yielded uh, very positive results in terms of the mindset of people, mm -hmm. in terms of protecting assets, uh, in terms of promoting that sense of responsibility and that sense of ownership that they must have towards the forest. And also in terms of uh, the kind of ecosystem services that these forests could offer to them. So uh, there is a monetary value to that uh, kind of services right. which is being offered. I feel that uh, this model uh, is something which will, uh, you know, pick on gradually over the years because a lot of people, a lot of villagers have seen this, how, um, you know, how successfully it's working. And there's a lot of positive response in terms of people wanting to come forward and, you know, give their forests. So we don't mm -hmm. take over those forests. The forest remains with the, with the, with the villagers and mm -hmm. the community. I think that's been a very successful model. And uh, this is something that we uh, are very passionate about because it's not just the traditional knowledge, but it's also uh, the fact that these are the guardians of this uh, biodiversity that we have at these small plant levels. That kind of rich knowledge needs to be preserved. All this is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, in line with uh, this new paradigm that we are envisioning for our state, which is called the environment state. So there's another sustainable development goal, the life underwater. Yes. But in the Niti Aayog website, right from 2018 to 2020, there is no data uploaded as far as uh, the life underwater is concerned. Uh, where is the problem? Oh, the problem is there. There's no doubt about that, Rahul. We do have a lot of problems in terms of life underwater because of um, uh, mining that takes place. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the unscientific ni nature of the mining has resulted in a lot of acid mine drainage, which has resulted in uh, a lot of these rivers becoming highly acidic. Mm -hmm. Now, that uh, acidic nature comes from the coal uh, mining areas. And the highly alkaline uh, nature of the water comes from the limestone mines. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very heady cocktail and mm -hmm. it goes on to, uh, you know, the rivers that we have, uh, namely one I'll just mention about, the Luka River in right. Gentia Hills, right. which in fact turned uh, to a very, very uh, weird blue color. Blue color, right. right. So that was because of the, uh, the acid mine drainage that was taking place, mm -hmm. uh, combined with the highly alkaline leakage that was taking place from the limestone mines. Um, now what we have done uh, very recently is that um, there has been a pilot project where we have brought in the process of uh, FICO remediation, mm -hmm. which uses um, algae to mm -hmm. uh, treat this water to bring about uh, more of a pH balance. Uh, somewhere around uh, 6.5 to 7.2 or something like that. Right. So um, this uh, pilot project which we have initiated in Gentia Hills has uh, shown uh, amazing results. That's good. And uh, we have seen that the Luka River today is slowly getting rejuvenated. So uh, I really believe that, uh, you know, this is the kind of technology that we require. We are very hopeful that this is mm -hmm. going to change things in a That's very, very wonderful. drastic manner. That's wonderful. Meghalaya has about 70% forest cover. Mm -hmm. And uh, managing this forest cover, uh, making it grow, is certainly of concern. And how do you plan to go forward with this? I have always been advocating this uh, and I continue to do so that we need to change our approach to a forest first economy. Our economy has always been uh, based on um, a very extractive nature and uh, we have never kept our forests uh, in the foreground. It's always been relegated to the background. Nobody's really thought about the kind of ecosystem services that uh, forests mm -hmm. offer. This is what, uh, you know, for me as a forest minister uh, that I look at uh, how we can uh, bring a forest first approach. Our forest department has initiated uh, steps to um, have um, a biodiversity heat map. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is uh, going to be 
a heat map which will very very clearly establish the kind of carbon stock that we have mm -hmm. the kind of inventory that we have we monetize that in terms of okay these are the stocks that we have and this is the kind of services that these the carbon stock that we have are offering in terms of carbon sequestration in terms of us uh, being one of the most carbon neutral states in the in the country you you touched upon it uh, briefly but i just want you to delve a little more time uh, into what i'm going to ask you now about with uh, these industries industries growing in meghalaya came about this concern of uh, greenhouse gases <clears throat> yes and at the <clears throat> same time meghalaya has a large forest area yes so how are we placed as a state as far as carbon capture state level carbon capture is concerned vis-a-vis -vis carbon production we're close to being carbon neutral and i think that um, uh, for us uh, it is a very difficult choice as a government because you know as of now as i said our economy has been progressing mm -hmm. in that extractive manner a lot of people will uh, probably be very critical of the fact that you know being a state that's uh, blessed with so much of biodiversity with uh, with so much of natural resources uh, we are extracting those natural resources adding to our carbon footprint until and un unless we have a forest first economy that will continue and we will keep spiraling down that path but then we are doing well aren't we overall i think we are doing well as a state but i would still say there's so much more to be done so much we are not even you know 10% of where we should be ideally wonderful that 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 makes us um, you know as citizens very happy to, for that coming from the Minister of Forests and Environments, that the Minister of Forests and Environments is not happy with the present state. Uh, uh, definitely not. Wonderful talking to you, sir. No, and my pleasure. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. So there you are, viewers. You just heard the Minister of Environment and Forests elaborate on the initiatives being taken by the government to preserve and conserve the forest wealth of Meghalaya. And it's not only about the forest wealth, also the underwater wealth the biodiversity that the government and the Department of Environment and Forests is so concerned about. Meghalaya as an environment state is a wonderful idea and the minister has touched upon that. Let us see that unfold and I'm sure there will be better days ahead for Meghalaya. We sign off today with this and promise to come back again next month with another episode of Let's Talk NRM. This came to you from MBMA, the Meghalaya Basin Management Agency under the CLEM project, the community-led landscape management project.